What up, this is So So with Detour ENT here at Focus TV Studios. And we have with us today a special guest, Zachary Cunningham. Yes, ma'am. Zachary Cunningham. Ooh. Now, you go by your full name like that or? Uh, whatever. Whatever. Whoever, whoever signed in the check, it depends on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nah, you know, I could be Zach. Homies call me Z. Yeah. You know what I mean? People call me Zach, whatever. You okay, know, okay. Depends. Now, I asked that because on your Instagram, was it ZC Cunningham? Yeah, like, yeah. Maybe go by ZC or something like that. Some people call me <laughs> ZC. Yeah. I mean, I got a bunch of nicknames. Okay, you know okay, 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 okay. Nickname for every job he has. <laughs> You have a writer, director, producer. Now he's getting into music production. Mm -hmm. uh, full time dad. Uh, yeah, yeah. Good music connoisseur. Uh, he just do a lot of stuff, man. He wear a lot of hats though, so yeah, he needs ten names. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, okay. So uh, I had a story. I told y'all I was going to tell y'all a story or whatever uh, on the podcast. So anybody been on the um, uh, pedal bar? You know, if you have oh, downtown? downtown? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I ain't went yet, but uh, yeah. I was trying to go, but I don't know. I, I, it just, it don't mix. I don't think, I don't want to do no work while I'm there. Well, <laughs> well, you actually don't have to. So if it's moving by itself. I mean, you can pedal if you want to. Oh, okay. Or you can just sit there. I was wondering how that worked. Yeah. The only thing is like, it's literally like bike seats. So your butt, you yeah. know, you're hurting. Because I think you're on there like two hours. Right, Oh. But they got like a, a part that's at the... Back and it's like cushions, but it only okay. seats like maybe three or four. Three or four people, people. But, so everybody else, your ass is gonna hurt. Yeah, yeah, but okay, the paddle bar, right? So it ain't, it don't have no bottom. You okay, know what I mean? so, it's so just, you gotta keep your belongings, you know, secured. Right. So and then you drinking, you know, too. So it's like <laughs> you, you gotta be careful. The lady said, well, just like last week, somebody got real drunk and decided she was gonna, you know, twerk on there and Slip. ended up falling back and oh, like, it's, it's just all that. But anyway, tell me why. Uh, I dropped my phone. Oh. Uh, we, get, we get to the, um, we get to our next, oh, no, our next, we get to the ending, and I'm, you know, looking for my oh, phone and stuff like that, and can't find it nowhere, Man. so the lady who was driving ended up uh, driving us, like, back, because, you know, thank God I got an iPhone, but so right. you can uh, find it, locate yeah. it, yeah, so, um, uh, we ended up, uh, G ended up driving us to where it was at. Tell me it was in the street. In the middle of the street? In the middle of the street. And we called, and I didn't see it at first. We was calling, and this guy pulled up to the light because it was at a light. And he was like, are you guys looking for a cell phone? It's, it's you know, it's like right there. In the wow. Street. But in, nobody, Ain't nobody ran it over? Nobody ran it over. Nothing, nothing like that. So. Wow. Better, man. <laughs> <laughs> like I said. Dan Gilbert. Right, right. right. <laughs> For real. That's the second phone I heard got returned <laughs> two years ago, in two weeks, man. Right. <laughs> right. Just keep driving. <laughs> right, right. I'm, I'm surprised he even said something like, hey. And I told him, I was like, I wish I had some money for you, dog. Because right. I would have yeah. given you something, man. But, That's crazy. But, yeah, I'm like, yeah. crazy night, man. Crazy well, night. Man. And the fact that they stop at, like, all these bars, I drink just a little bit too much. <laughs> when did you know it was uh, going bad? Uh, I would say at at, uh, at the second location, it was right by uh, St. Andrews, a bar right by. Oh, uh, not the city bar. Or the no. uh, one uh, on the corner. Okay, I know. Yeah, it, it looked like kind of an upscale type bar when we walked in there. But I had two shot, uh, two green tea shots, which I've never heard of those before. Remember, I married one one time. Oh, that's what that was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two, yeah. Two green tea shots, and then I had a, a whole glass of wine. I just jugged that down, and then that'll do it. By that, yeah, that was it. But do it. anyway, that's enough of, enough of my story. What, what, what was y'all weekend like so far? Man, my wife was actually dog sitting mm. this weekend for her homegirl. Okay. It was terrible. <laughs> do y'all have any animals at all? No. No. We right. so, got a two and a half year old. Oh, that's like a little animal exactly. right there. Right. Sale, so. She got to chase behind this dumb ass dog. Yeah. Like was, dog, was it a small or a big yeah, dog? Yeah, Yorkie. Oh, oh yeah. You know, they like untrainable. Yeah, they, they, they do what they want. Peeing like, everywhere. Right. Oh, God. Dude, oh, trying no. to pee on this I'm kid. Gonna kick the shit out of this little dog. Wow. Dog, I'm like, we had a good weekend. We would have had a great weekend if you weren't here. <laughs> right, I said, you know what? Oh. Get, come, hey, man, we, well, how far you said you were? Come exactly, get this piece. Bro, I was just like, yeah. <laughs> You no, know, we had. Yeah, and when you ain't had no dog, like that's what I'm saying. I can see if you had like another dog or something like yeah. that. But when you ain't got no dog, you got a. That ain't like right, no babysitting right. and nothing like that, you know. But that's a dog, man. <laughs> and it's a little puppy, so right. it's fragile. You know, anything yeah. can go wrong. Yeah, yeah. that shit over. <laughs> right, that's three thousand dollars down the drain. Don't, right. don't accidentally sit on that boy. Like. Exactly. Right. So. Well, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 what I had a little kickback. Well, I, I was. Called my sister over to the house. I'm like, yeah, because I bought a house. You don't never come on my house. 
So at first, because uh, my niece bought a new car, so I'm like, well, have her drive over here and, you know, y'all go out to eat or whatever. So she's all like, uh, she's acting iffy. So it's like a couple hours go past and she called like, well, yeah, I'm on my way. Uh, get your grill ready. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I just said, hey, the, it's a restaurant on the way. She's like, no, I'll get the grill ready and all that. But she called my cousin brother over there too. So we ended up having a kickback. We chilling. And then uh, her boyfriend said he had never seen The Last Dragon. He stopped the music. We, I said, hold on, what? I said, no, we watched The Last Dragon. So we, we got drunk and watched The Last Dragon. Uh, What's that? What's that a movie with who in it? Yeah, I forgot you, young. How old is her boy? <laughs> no, look, he he's the 40. <laughs> we like, what? That's so why we said, like uh. Jet Li in it? That's what it no, sounds like. The Last Dragon. The Last Dragon is better than any Jet Li movie. Because no. it's, it's Barry Gordy's Last Dragon. Though. It's yeah. the black, it's Bruce Lee. It's Leroy. like Enter the Dragon. It's like a, it's like a black version of Enter the Dragon. In Harlem. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. And show okay. enough. Like, I say, yeah. wait a minute. That's a, no, look. So, this is what I'm saying. He's like, I'm like, you never seen this shit, so I'd have rented it off uh, Prime. And he's like, oh, that's where that come from. Oh, that's where that come from. Right. Oh, that's where Martin got that from. And, oh, like, you know, so I'm like, yeah, it's a reference for all this stuff, though. Like, wow. So, yeah, that's the one thing why them old movies is good, though, because you learn a lot about, like, music. Like stuff that's being music, and mm -hmm. you be hearing your favorite rapper say they be referencing these movies and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. So Bruce Leroy, that's um. He's black. Right. But he he in the middle of Harlem and he acts like a Chinaman, like a karate regular karate okay, man. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, I, I never seen the movie. No, but it's, it's dope. Speaking of that name, though, when you say Bruce Leroy, Bruce Lee, right? Right. So did y'all hear about um, the incident that recently just happened with Alec Baldwin? Yeah. And all of that that's with the with the. Well, you know, but but I, like that's, they said that uh, it's something going on. They got to investigate that movie because they said that it been they've been finding live rounds and all the guns. I say who? How y'all filming oh, that movie set? That yeah. movie set. They said they didn't found live rounds in these guns and all that stuff though. Yeah. And they, so whoever loaded, I don't think Alec Baldwin's going to necessarily get charged. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think whoever loaded the gun is going to get charged though. And what the type of time is you on, bro? Like. So it was a it's a young girl. Her dad is actually a Hollywood armorer, but she's not union. Oh. And I guess, you know, she mismanaged it. Mm -hmm. And I guess there's a podcast that came out like a month ago where she said she didn't take her first, she almost didn't take her first job because she didn't feel like she was ready to mm -hmm. be an armorer. Right. Well, guess what? Happened. You're not ready. <laughs> I say you're not ready. My thing right. is, like, if, even if the DP wouldn't have got shot, like, somebody was going to get somebody shot. Somebody was going to get it, shot. It was a lot like, this is the thing. He's pointing, like yeah, I said, he in a movie like, pointing a gun. So that's why I say I think they need to investigate because, like, I, man, this is, that's yeah. beyond reckless, like, almost. Well, yeah. That's very negligent. Like, Because, yeah. I mean, like like I said, you know, when Bruce Lee's son, you know, got killed yeah, got on shot. set like shot, that, yeah. too, it's yeah. like, on the cro yep. you know, all those precautions were supposed to be put into place to prevent this from happening. So it's how, too how much stuff happen? in place for this to like to actually happen, bro. Like yeah. there, it's too many hands that has to pass through, and we're in a movie set. Like <laughs> why do we have live rounds at all here at all? Or like yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man. Uh, yeah. But you even gotta be careful with blanks because blanks is held by like plastic. You know, right. So you're close to somebody with a blank. Oh, we can go through, right? Yeah, mm. you can hurt somebody with a blank. Wow, so that's you crazy. Be careful, right? Like, just be careful with them guns, yeah, man. Yeah, be careful with guns. That's yeah. crazy, yeah, bro. Yeah. That's crazy. All right, well, enough of the, the podcast segment. Let's get into you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, Let's get go. into you. Let's and, go on uh, up. <laughs> like we, uh, yeah, like I said, we talked enough. <laughs> like, but uh, like I said, so um. Just let us know, uh, let the people know how you got started and your humble beginnings into uh, how you become the director and writer and all these things. So, like, What made you even get started in film and production? Um, so what made me get started? Well, uh, you know, poetry, because I yeah. used to poetry back then. Right, yeah, I forgot, so, poet, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. So um, I had just came back from school. Like after like fucking up at school, as mm -hmm. most of us do. We all did. School, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And uh, one of my homegirls, Toya, Davo, uh, right. my cousin. Okay. Um, I had saw her. She had a camera, and I had these poems called mm -hmm. Detroit or whatever. And I was like, Hey, um, you want to do a documentary with me? You know what I'm saying? Based on these poems. Okay. And so we did it. It ended up becoming like this, like art film type of thing. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to use a camera. I didn't know how to do nothing. Right. And it was like super fun, you know what I'm saying? So I got like super fulfilled from it. And then I was just like, shit, I want to keep doing this. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I had to buy my own camera 
And that's where, like, Best and all that shit came yeah. from. And I started shooting videos. Mm-hmm. You know, I just kind of uh, fell into it. Mm-hmm. I always say it kind of called me. You know? So okay. you were you were more self-taught? Um, yeah, as far everything. As everything okay, okay. self-taught. Yeah, but I say, because, you know, I've seen your, your work, and, I mean, you... I definitely like it. I like the, the quality of it. I like the... Most of the stuff I've seen, it, you know, have a meaning to it, and that's probably more so because you have that poetry background, so mm-hmm. you want your stuff to kind of have some type of of, uh, of bigger meaning than just throwing something out there. Because like I said, your latest stuff, you call them, uh, what is it, something art films? Was, uh, Darker than Blue. Yeah, okay, yeah, like, yeah. And so it's like art, like yeah. it jumps out, like, with the poetry and everything together, so it's like yeah. moving art. You know what I'm saying? Films, though, though. That's what makes it so dope, though. Like, and it's always with a purpose, though. Like, you're going to come out feeling better after seeing all this stuff, though. Like, really. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you always got to, like... I always look at it like this, bro. Like, for me, I'm a hip-hop fan. Like, I'm a head. Like, mm-hmm. I mean... Uh, yeah. Right, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm a head, head. Like, so, for me, like, all my favorite rappers... Like, so, like, the rappers were always gravitated towards, like, dudes who kind of, like did what the fuck they wanted to do. Like, so right now, it's like, like, Rock Marcy, or even, like, 10 years ago, like, Doom, like, MF okay, Doom. Right. Dudes who did kind of, like, what they wanted to do. So for me, it's always, like, not doing what anybody else does. It's like, how can I add to what, mm. you know, black cinema is? Right. You know, what is it missing? Is, Let me be Yeah, the, what is it? Let right. me fill that gap. You know right. what I'm saying? So it's like... I'm looking at, like, my comedy. I'm looking at rock. Right, I'm looking yeah, at all these yeah, right. Like, that's how I want to be for, like, I always say, I want to be like the Griselda. Right, <laughs> yeah, like, like, we're doing something. Right, else. Right. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just want to feed the people who like this type of shit. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to give them that. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, of course, like, when you start out, a lot of people are not going to get it mm-hmm. or whatever, just like a lot of people didn't get it, like, 10 years ago. But now right. they get it. Because it's, some okay. like... It's a brand built, yes, like, sir. and you know what you're gonna get yourself into. So yeah. it's engulfing. Like, I mean, when you see something for the first time, it might just okay. It's a flash in the pan. Like, okay, well, mm, well. Yeah. but then when you consistently see it, consistently right. see it over and over, and then you see the quality, and it's getting better too. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's what draws you in, though. And then it's like a lot too. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's like not not missing. This nigga won't miss for nothing. Exactly. Like, right. Cause, yeah, because 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 you're not trying to appease like an audience that you don't really care about. This is so true. it's harder for a dude like Rock to miss. It's harder for a dude like West to miss. Mm-hmm. West, West Gun can't even rap. Right. You know what I'm saying? And but, he will tell you can't rap. Yeah, he <laughs> rap. But his stuff is still cold because he's feeding that audience. So that's kind of like mm-hmm. what I always try to do, you know, with my family. Sidebar. Right. I went to a West Side Gun. Now, we know he can't rap, though. Yeah. But at the concerts... The littest part, because you know it's just the simple stuff though. Like all, all like soon as he takes the mic, he don't even have to rap. All that chants though, I know where his mind stay. <laughs> all that, it go crazy though. Benny them, you know people hype to see them or whatever. Yeah. But when Gun come on, that's the that's the audience participation. Yeah. The whole I'm a shooter doing bad again. Yeah. All that man, look, he go crazy though. So like, yeah, like. And it's not appeasing. Like you said, I'm, I'm doing what I feel is good and I'm putting this artwork. And it's like, it's dope though. Like, right. And that, that was one of my questions. Like, being from where we from, like you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. is it, was it hard not really trying, I guess you kind of answered that. Is it really hard not like falling into making like the hood films or the mm-hmm. what's the name or I mean, what, what people want to see? I mean, because mm-hmm. uh, you knew me as a kid. Like, so right. like, for me, I was always like, I was never expected to be that. You right, know yeah, saying? right, right. Like, so I was always the kid to where it was like, hey, we gonna come hang with you to not get no bullshit. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's what I'm saying, so yeah. I ain't smoke, I it's, ain't drink. It's the same. Oh, I did with <laughs> right. right, that's it. So it was like, when that happened, it's not like I'm not where I'm from. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Like all my niggas are still on right, that yeah, right. type right, of right. time. So. And I think that the... If you did try to jump off niggas, like what the fuck exactly. are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Like, like, that ain't a, ain't a look for you. This ain't no Zach. Yeah. This ain't no Zach production. Yeah. I, still gotta, I still gotta go back to the crib. Right. 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 I still gotta answer to my homeboys. Like people know me, so I just like, yeah. hey, I'm just gonna be who I am. Right, right. right. And you know that's and that's dope. I think that you know a lot of people need to uh, keep that mindset. You know what I mean? So yeah. what what crowd do you uh, more so aim to? You know, with your films. Um, I would just say like I, I don't like I don't really like to put it in a box. I would just mm-hmm. say like if you kind of if you rock with it, you rock Maybe. with it. Like if you if you wanna if you rock if you like to feel something, you know you mm-hmm. like texture. 
um, then you probably going to, you know, rock with my like stuff. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And if you just rock with just like, you know, kind of like, I guess like what we doing and kind of like what we represent. Right. Because I think it's more than just the work. I think it's the fact that like, I am a college dropout. I am from, you know, mm-hmm. the east side of Detroit. You right. know what I'm saying? And like, but I represent like a different aspect of mm-hmm. it. Right. I'm not on that type of time, but I'm not. No, like, far I removed. Like, like I said, I ain't no, no, no weak ass nigga at all. Yeah, exactly. By far. So it's like, <laughs> don't get that twisted. So it's just like, you know, I, I just am who I am, and I think people gravitate towards that, mm-hmm. towards the honesty. I think right. that's really what it's about. Okay, okay. So with you being self taught, what was the what was the the hardest thing I would say, or just the most difficult for you to overcome, or took the longest to overcome, like with being self taught? Probably just mm-hmm. the discipline. Because I, I didn't know nothing about it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so everything else kind of came easy for me. Mm. Filming didn't come easy for me. Like, when I was a kid, like, hooping, I had, like, a 40 inch vertical. So I could just jump over everybody. Yeah. Naturally. Right, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, about, yeah, we've been done since we were 12, 13. Exactly. Hey, man, go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? Poetry came easy for me. Um, but with this, like, I had to, like, really, like, change my mm-hmm. life. Like, change the way I operated. You know what I'm saying? I was standing up late. I was into it. I was reading. I was just really practicing. Mm-hmm. It was like the first time where I did anything where I kind of had to like really, mm-hmm. uh, like really like kind of like implement things, right. implement systems. You know what I'm okay, saying? Okay, right. yeah. I mean, I yeah. think, yeah, that dedication for sure. And yeah. just the, you know, um, uh, the repetition of like yeah. you know continue just keep to doing it right. stuff like yeah. that that is a very hard thing to do yeah. you know right. yeah. and finding your voice you know finding your yeah. voice finding your yeah. confidence yeah. finding what yeah. you want to do what you want to say you know what I'm saying and getting over those early humps of people not getting it mm-hmm. right. you know what I'm saying like, you're like why don't you just yeah why just don't you shut the it? fuck up and listen yeah. like, exactly right now, just watch just watch though exactly. right <laughs> so uh, that's what I was saying uh, I, is it best to what when you documented your father having mm-hmm. kidney cancer, though, how was the process of turning, like, how was that, that you, like, you know, because that's just in itself is a lot to, you know, because mm-hmm. you don't know how that's going to come out, but I think you made a pretty dope film. What was the process in that, though? Like, how can you maintain, like, your sanity? Because I know you're staying strong for him, mm-hmm. but, you know, you go somewhere else, like, damn, I don't know how this going to come out, though. Mm-hmm. Like, but see, the way, like I said, I thought that was pretty dope, and you, uh, did a good job of that. So what was the process of doing that though? Like So when we when I did that, that wasn't even a thing. Like so me and Toya, we recorded that back in like twenty fifteen. Oh wow. And I was just sitting on it because we never got a chance to finish it. Right. Then I was working on a documentary about my pops when he was still on dialysis. Okay. So um when the pandemic hit, I had all this footage just kind of sitting around right. and I had all this life happen. So I was like, man, you know what? Like I can kind of combine both. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's ideas. what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's really how it came. It wasn't even intentional, but I guess it was meant right. to happen. It was meant way. to happen because it came out dope. It, it came, came beautiful. Yeah. Dope. Yeah. But my, like my pops, we recorded that at A-Tone studio. I remember when we used to record at A-Tone studio. Yeah. Right. Seven yeah. Miles, yeah. Uh, Seven Mile Livernoy. Oh, yeah, yeah, like right there. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Is that like, still over? Like, it's, it's still over? No. I say, no, they know. Like I said, hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a minute. Yeah. My pops came to the studio, we recorded that shit, and um, I was just sitting on it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I, we could never finish it, so in the pandemic, and I had all this footage on the hard job, I was like, man, let me just go ahead and like see if I can put right. this shit together. Right. I'm about to say, well, that's a good thing, too, because, you know, Either way, like during the pandemic when everything stopped, you had that to still be able to put out, you know, your work and stuff like that too. Yeah, so, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is what I'm saying. I, like I seen like some artists, like the woke artists, mm-hmm. like during the pandemic and during the uh, insurrection and all that stuff. Did you feel pressure? Like, was it pressure from people like, well, Zach, you got to, you got to come out with something. <laughs> Because like you see how they was doing Kendrick and Cole, and they wrote a diss track with J Cole. Yeah. Was that uh, was her name? Okay. Yeah, no name. Right, said diss track because he didn't say anything about the black people being shot and you know what I'm saying oh, all this Lord. stuff though. Yeah. 
So I'm like, was it, you know, the woke crowd, they got a bad, though. They, you, did you feel forced to even? I mean, of course, like I said, you don't feel no pressure, like, Hell nothing no, like that, though. I right? feel forced at all, because I feel like most of these niggas faking anyway. Like, right. just keeping it a buck. Like, like, I've been, like, I, like I've, been on, I've been on that black power shit before it was cool. Right, like, yeah, so, that's what I'm saying. I'm, out of them, I'm like, I don't even believe y'all. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You like, think because it's an in thing now, yeah, though, like, so to be me, woke. Right. So for me, it's like, man, I was talking, like, you go look at best, too. I'm talking about this shit <laughs> 10 years ago. 10 years Years ago, you know right. what I'm, I'm like, so for me, I was just sitting back kind of watching like, okay, I'm glad that people are kind of finally starting to wake up. Right. I just want to see what, like, if the changes last. And yeah. like, so we, a year after George Floyd and... It's back right. to normal. Right, it's, it's yeah. back to normal. Yeah, nobody, so that's how you know the, the, the fake woke, yeah. right. So, so that's why I was just like, nah, like... No, well, y'all have fun, whatever. Yeah, like I said, come, I'm here. Yeah, that <laughs> come through in my art anyway. You know right, yeah. Like, that type of shit come through in my art. But I'm not going to be, like, victim to, like, the over, like, political shit. Right, mm-hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because, so. like I said, you see where you, you see the stance in the art. And, like I said, if you go back and you've been watching, you, yeah. you should understand how I feel, though. And that's, like, I felt bad for Kendrick and Cole. Like, I mean, like, they've been kind of telling us this shit the whole yeah. time. So, we go play the old what's yeah. the name and see how you feel about yeah. it though. Like you, and then especially once J Cole, like I'm really just trying to unpack this shit. Like really, this is fucking with my head yeah. to the point where like y'all want me to go in the studio. Like I'm just letting y'all know he had to come honestly. It was fucked up. He had to make a track to uh, yeah. answer getting dissed about not saying that shit was fucked up. It was just yeah. all bad. Well, Kendrick told you on Mortal Man. He said when this shit hit the fan, is you still a, a fan? fan. You, right. He kind of predicted this shit. Yeah. Like when this shit hits the fan, is you still a fan? Right. Like. And it hit the fan, and people kind of tried to flip up on him. Right, you know that's what I'm saying. Like, he predicted it. That's how the fuck y'all gonna look back at me, man. Exactly. Like, like I made a whole album right. before this shit was even cool. Right. 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 You know what I'm saying? But that's why I, I, I say that a lot. But I, I didn't talk to some of the gods and all that stuff. I say, man, y'all niggas be getting in trouble, go to prison, and come back woke. I know some guys that been woke since they was like 14, 13, 15, you know what I'm saying? Young exactly. doing it. And people, man, get the fuck out. We don't want to hear that shit. Whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Some people just do it, like you said, for the hype of things. And, uh, you know, I think if, if it's not something that you're going to continue to be doing, you know what I mean? Right. Um, on the other side, though, I think, you know, there are people who, like, in that moment, you know what I mean? Right, they want right. to, you know, speak out and say something, which is fine. Mm-hmm. Um. But you know, if it for those that are just doing it just for the hype, that ain't. Because like I said, like a like I respect a person like Ti. Like he said, well, I stumbled on it on accident. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Label me an activist. I stumbled on it by accident. I just seen something that wasn't right, right. Mm-hmm. and I used my voice to say something. But then I'm just noticing everything else. So I'm like, mm-hmm. but it ain't like I just seen it trending. Like okay, yeah, he said. Yeah, I right, think that's right. the first thing happened uh, in Atlanta mm-hmm. with the uh, restaurant, and that's what he started. Uh, and then he got with Keisha Mallory and. You got to know it. Like, it's a lot of fucked up shit going on, though, right? You know what I'm saying? So, then, you know, you get caught sleeping with other girls and stuff like that. I mean, like I said, I just love T.I. because he's human. Like, that's what I'm saying. He, you know, it's the human nature of it, though. So, it's not for a point. It's a purpose. You know it's from the heart. Because, if you, you know, you got a fake woke all the time. You can't be sleeping with girls with your wife and stuff like that. You know, you can't do that. Like I say, this is too oxy yeah, work. The reality is, it's going to always be fucked up shit. Especially when it comes to like black liberation and shit like that, it's gonna yeah. always be fucked up. Shit, it's gonna always be a a battle to be fought. Like so, people just need to understand that that's just like a lifetime thing. As long as this country exists, that, yeah. that fight it was is, built on it. It was built on it. <laughs> it was exactly. built on it. So what's um, what's let's get a little bit back into like the the background of like filming. What is something that people wouldn't expect? when making a film, something that will surprise them. Is there anything that, that, that you came across like that? Um, I would just think it, it just, just how much how much thought goes into it, like mm-hmm. beforehand. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like people think like, okay, you got like a bunch of lights and a camera, mm-hmm. and that means that you can make film, a right, you can do it. Right, you know no. what I'm saying? But it, it's a lot more thought. You know that okay, goes into yeah. a lot more intention. Yeah, that kind of goes into it. Right, right. And I think that's because the gear is so accessible mm-hmm. nowadays. So people, I mean, even when you see dudes shooting music videos, I literally just see dudes music videos. They put the camera on the gimbal. They just, you know, <laughs> right, like yeah. that. Right. And it's just things it's rapping. Right. You know. So, but yeah. it's a lot more. And not, and that's there's nothing wrong with that. But you know, it's just a lot of thought mm-hmm. that kind of goes into it if you really want to do it at a high level, like. 
I mean, even with the commercial stuff, like I do commercial work, and when I'm on a commercial, like you gotta you gotta pitch the commercial. I gotta make a whole pitch deck. Mm-hmm. Then like I'm in pre-production doing fine tooth comb storyboard and all this stuff for two weeks, mm-hmm. and that commercial is just twelve hours, and then right. you out. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you know you do really doing two weeks of work <laughs> for twelve hours. Twelve hours, man. That's wow. Crazy. wow. Yeah, no, I was going to say, like, I, I completely get that because, like, I mean, I've seen people say all the time, like, just because you watch yourself a camera, that don't mean you a photographer, photographer right? Yeah. <laughs> and stuff like that, like, and even, like, for me, like, I'm nowhere near, like, an expert at, at, at really much or a full expert at really of anything, honestly. I feel like there's still a lot on everything that I need to learn, you know, especially, mm-hmm. like, with this stuff like this, but... Um, I know that when doing production lighting is like, you know, mm-hmm. one of like the biggest things that can kind of set you apart from just somebody else that's just picking up a camera and, sure. and like shooting. Sure. So, um, yeah. That's dope. <laughs> and uh, like I said, my questions, you already know, I have personal questions. I have the hard hitting questions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is a bad Niles album? A bad not not Shadamus. I mean, we can or is that or can I can I not say not Shadamus because people see that <laughs> as the worst. <laughs> Listen, you know, like, and this what's crazy is, but see, I have a, a with not Shadamus. Like I said, he's the first off the utmost expert on all things Nas. <laughs> uh, you go on his page, he does Nas album reviews. Like you know what I'm saying. I mean, he's honest. Like you know what I'm saying. He's just not fanboying it, but like he's, Bro, he's being you honest. See that <laughs> Nas is my favorite rapper. What you, what you like about him? What you like about Nas? I mean, Nas is like, Nas is hip-hop, man. Like, yeah, Nas is Nas. Like, Nas <laughs> yeah, like... Nas. Now, uh, Nostradamus, I, I'm going to tell you something about Nostradamus that people don't know. It was supposed to be a double album. You, I, you made the, this point. Right, too. yeah. <laughs> if the songs that leaked... Want to play rough. Play rough and what's the name? Yeah. It goes all the way to the top of the stack, though. And I like Dr. Not Boo. I don't care what y'all say. <laughs> Dr. Not Boo is dope. I hate Dr. Nobu. <laughs> it's dope. <laughs> but I can get why some people like it, though. Yeah. I mean, it's just a, yeah. Right. I mean, but, uh, so you say Nasha Diamonds, that's the only one? <laughs> no. Nah, so, okay, so look. So look, let's, okay. Let's, so Illmatic, classic. It was written classic. I Am. It's still dope, though. I Am is really dope. Yeah. Hey, no, you know what? I just want to say something real quick. So, the line on... New York State of Mind Part Two. I literally, it literally just hit me in the chest. He say, uh, "Like the top lock, Mama should have cuffed me to, to the radiator. radiator. Why, Why not? not? It might have saved me later from, from my, my block. block. Why cops?" <laughs> <laughs> That's what's, Bro, yeah, that's why you're that like, is so different. Yeah, I see. I see. Yeah. That is different. That's different. Like, yeah. My mom should have cuffed me to the radiator. Right. Save, save me, me from, from these streets. Yeah. On. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I say that's something deep. different. Now, <laughs> like. Why, why I have you here? Because I keep saying like, like it's it. No, he's not the only Nas fan like this though. Yeah, like, yeah. like Nas fans are like, but see, I don't see the adulation. And to me, these Hit Boy albums are like classics. And they all like, like. Well, I had my guy over last night. He like, I mean, it's yeah, it's. But I said if you was gonna, I think these Hit Boy albums, if like for somebody like her, I can't play Illmatic because it's so. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like you, know what what Supreme, you can't play Supreme Fighter. No, no, like, yeah. Well, I, I might, well, I don't know, I might get off to just be like, well, what's, what make Ghostface so good? This is what, this is why he's so good. Yeah, like one. You yeah, can play like, on one. Yeah, you can play one or something like that. But, but you can do that for like Take It in Blood. Like, you can yeah. put on Take It in Blood. Like, but, but see, like I said, you can, these Hit Boy I, albums, mm-hmm. I think it's, uh, it's dope because you can tell that he idolized him and how Kanye did with uh, Common would be like, no, this is how you're supposed to sound. I'm a, I, you know what? Look, I respect you, but look, take this. This this, this was going to make it. And I, you can hear it. You can hear the adulation and how you feel about Nas in the, in the work that they do. Though. And I think I have another point, but you know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's another point. The difference between, you know, people hate Jay-Z now, like really. Like he shows up to the party and then, oh, this motherfucker. But the difference between Jay-Z and Nas now, I feel I feel like it's like the old nigga telling you something is just like kind of different. It's like Jay-Z is like almost over the top of you telling you, and Nas is like putting you on game to it. Because like, they talk about like all the new ways, you know, the new shit they're doing. Nas talking over your head with the money. Like he, he said, look, he throw I mean, that shit Nas in. Nas been doing that shit. But it's like he, 
He's not just like, nigga, you don't know about what. That's how Jay-Z comes off. But Nas like, hey, yeah, because you know. Uh... <laughs> Nas really trying to educate you. Yeah. Jay kind of trying to sign you. But that's the, that's the difference between <laughs> Brooklyn niggas and Queens niggas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know All right, so for me, I don't feel like, I don't really like King's Disease 1 like that. I love and, it. And the reason why I don't like Foxy it, Brown ass. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, her verse was pretty bad. <laughs> No, but like to me, Nas just was like, like so like new Nas in terms of his sharpness. I feel like he wasn't in the pockets. Yeah. I feel like it's a certain pocket that I like Nas in. But I I think he uh I think that was on purpose. Like on the outro, he got he opened up. Oh yeah, on yeah. The second part of the outro when the beat kind of opened up a bit. I think though I think he did it on purpose because mm-hmm. it was like I need people to understand what I'm saying. Like like this is a this is a, like this is for everybody. So yeah. I think he couldn't get. I mean. Yeah. It's not fair to us. It's not fair to like yeah. actual fans, but like no, I'm yeah. I'm still trying to. This the whole point of Hit Boy doing this, so we can we can be bigger. It's a bigger yeah. album though. So like, I think it, it was more on purpose. He still was it was a little sharp, but he was just trying to get the points across so everybody can yeah. get it though. But like you said, the outro. That's when he said, "Okay, now this is for you. Y'all yeah. waited this long. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> y'all waited this long. I got y'all though. Like, but yeah. to me, I feel like Nas can do it at will. You remember he did the song with Swiss? Yeah. Echo. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Echo. Oh my God. Like, come on, man. Echo. Yeah, crazy. see, he brought me into the Nas. If, if, if I'm just sitting back and, and listening, it's because, you know, they the experts at, at this, so <laughs> you know, I, ain't, I ain't really got too much to Echo say. Echo so dog. Oh, my God. That's crazy. That's dog. And the video, too. That was visual moving art, though, like. But you want to know, this, so this this my thing about the Jay and Nas, because Jay and Nas are, like, my two favorite rappers. But to me, the difference between Jay and Nas is, in rock with me real quick, is Illmatic. And this is why. Because it's all perception, right? Yeah. So Illmatic comes out, and Illmatic, well, Nas, well, Live at the Barbecue comes out in 91. Street's Disciple. And then pretty much from 91 to 94, Nas has like the most anticipated album ever. Ever, right. All the best producers of that The time. greatest producers of the time, right, yeah. Of the time, you know, demos is coming out. Of right. Like the, you know, all the that sessions, stuff, yeah, right, yeah. All of that stuff. So, like, everybody, like, their halftime drops in, like, 93. Right. You know. So that, what movie is that? What movie is that it was in? Uh... Um, was it New Jersey? No, it wasn't New Jersey Drive. It was. Uh, it was another movie. I know what you're talking about. Okay, go ahead. So, so it. So halftime drops. Then Illmatic comes out. Illmatic comes out. He's like hero. is like the new Rock Him. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It was written. Comes out two years later. Right. But people don't really rock with it was written like that. Because like it's not that, Illmatic. Though. Because it's not Illmatic. Right. Reasonable doubt. Going to Jay. Reasonable Doubt comes out, it flies under the radar to a degree. Four mic album. Right. Great yeah. album. In retrospect, it's In great. retrospect, it's great, though. Now, you can technically say that Reasonable Doubt's drop off to volume one is very similar to Illmatic's drop off. Yeah, like, because this is not this. But it's see, we, we may understand it now because it's like, okay. Mm-hmm. We had this buzz. Now we have to get bigger. We have yeah. to get bigger, so yeah. we have to be more. That's why you get we a bullshit get sunshine video. That's yeah. why you get like you know what I'm saying. I mean, I like I said, I seen somewhere he said no. We had to drop streets as Washington because we at the end of us trying to become more popular and bigger. Yeah. We we lost the streets. Like yeah. we we lost. So no, we got to drop the street uh, streets as Washington right now because we still of that. Mm-hmm. But we look shiny. We look kind of crazy when yeah. we look at it though. But we, our goal is to get bigger though. Yeah. Like so. And Ja Rule had the best verse on Murder Ground, but that's just another story. <laughs> that's why I didn't watch the verse because I knew they weren't gonna do. They wasn't gonna do that type of shit. Like that's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, people like you hate Ja Rule. I say I hate singing Ja Rule. Like, yeah, Ja was nice. Ja he could rap. I don't know if he really had the best verse, but he had a great verse. He had a great verse though. Yeah. Like uh, you know, the, people. When I make my Ja Rule jokes about Fire Festival and you trash and you know Kermit the Frog and all that shit. I love Ja Rule. It's because I love Ja Rule, though. Like, when he came out, man, I yeah, fuck with Rule. Uh, what is it? Um, what? Uh, you know, healthy criticism. Yeah, you know, yeah. That. See, I'm a fan. <laughs> so I can say what I want to say, though. Like, I'm not no regular nigga just, yeah. just trashing him for no reason, though. Like, I was a fan. I was there. The Murderers album, we slammed that shit. That's why I got a shape. Listen to that every day. Like, y'all don't give yeah. up. I'm talking about the whole album, though, right? And where's Black Child? That's his name, <laughs> Now, how do you, you know, you know, because films have to have music too mm-hmm. on there. How do you choose what, what song is going to fit the mood of, 
you know, certain scenes in your films or your, you know. So I usually work with my um, my cousin, cousin by marriage. Um, his name is Matthew Crouch. He's a composer, mm -hmm. and so I'm a huge jazz fan as well. Like jazz and hip hop are like my two favorite yeah. genres. <laughs> so like pretty much all the music in my in all my films, all original music, you okay, know, composed okay. by him. I say, yes, I you ain't got to worry about no copyright, none, you know, and none of that, okay. And I usually to just tell him, you know, you know, what it is, you mm -hmm. know, I like and what it is I want. We just go back and forth, okay. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now what you get in production now, so you're going to start, now, nah, because like, you like the jazz stuff, though. Mm -hmm. So are you going to pick up instruments? And, I, I actually and, play, I played bass as a kid. Right. Mm -hmm. bass, but I, no, I probably never played bass. You said, no, I'm going to just, I, 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 I ain't fucking with it. Like, <laughs> like, I'm going to stay with these pads right here, man. Like, exactly. Exactly. But sense. yeah, nah, I mean, that shit is it's cool. I mean, I mean, honestly, I just picked up beats. First off, I always wanted to do it. Yeah. And then secondly, my brother rapped, so I was like, I wanted to be able to help him because mm -hmm. it's just so hard to, like, find, like, the type of beats that we like mm -hmm. here, yeah. you know, in Detroit, unless you like in certain spaces. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then if you're in certain spaces, they're going to be smacking you in the head, right. you know, to get them boys. So I'm like, okay. Let me go listen to some Rock Marcy stuff. Let me, de you know. Pattern myself. Like, yeah, yeah. Let me go listen to some Mad Lib and stuff. You know, Jay Dilla, all that type of stuff. And right. Pick it up. And then mm -hmm. it just kind of snowballed. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That's dope. That's dope, man. So, um, is there something uh, currently that you're working on as far as um, your short films go? Any project? Um. Yeah, I mean, we got the Darker and Blue series, which yeah. is like, um, kind of like an ongoing series of short films working with different directors mm -hmm. um, from around the city. Okay. It's kind of like short art films that we're just putting online just for, you know, people to really consume. Mm -hmm. So that's an ongoing series. Um, my feature film, In the Sentimental Mood, is actually coming out on Comcast and like Tubi and like Tubi. That's weeks. dope. Yeah. So that's That's cool. what's up, yeah. Yeah, so it'll be on Comcast and Sandy Black. Which is like a dope thing, <laughs> and then it's gonna be on like TV and all these other platforms. Mm -hmm. as well. okay, 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 that's dope. Yeah, yeah. So, um, tell everybody where they can actually um, just find some of your work now, um, mm -hmm. right on YouTube, Instagram. Um, you can go to my YouTube um, at Misfitted Academics. Um, you can go to my Instagram at z.c.cunningham. Okay. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate you coming out. Um, I got a movie to pitch too. <laughs> like We're gonna do that off camera. So like yeah, yeah. I mean, I appreciate you coming out, and uh, we got to know a little bit about you know your background and kind of get to uh, see the man behind the film. You know what I mean? Cause a lot of times people don't really know who you are. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Personally, your character and stuff like that. But I think they was able to kind of see a little bit of your interest. Right, yeah. Music is a big, big part of that. Oh, yeah. right. in this yeah, <laughs> and, and he doesn't really mean Nasha Thomas is a bad album. It's just. I do mean that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a he don't really mean it <laughs> we had it we've been having this discussion for 15 years I put those songs that's missing on Nostradamus so that's what makes it a classic <laughs> play rough and drunk by myself it's on the album it's on there <laughs> which puts it over the top uh, alright well thank you guys for watching um, and as always make sure to check out our previous videos and we'll see you next time yeah. peace